Welcome, welcome. How's it going? I got Scott. How are you, Rainer? Very good. Nice to see you all here. Awesome. Scott, how are you? Good, good. Good to hear it. Obviously, you guys can hear me. David, welcome. How are you, sir? Howdy. Awesome. Everybody else, I see a bunch of people still joining here. My numbers are ticking up. So welcome, welcome, everybody. If you are new, you are in the right spot. Just before we get started, um, for everyone who's going to ask me throughout this for any of the links we're going to talk about or any of the resources, they are all in the members area. So that's specifically for, for the ones watching, those will be in the chat. But for the ones watching the replay, all of the links are in the members area that we're going to be talking about today. So today we're going to talk about the rest of or the second side of the pieces, I guess you could say. So, so thus far, we've talked about the, um, I would call it the sales and marketing side. So you have kind of three categories in any business. You have sales and marketing, you have the deliverable, which is like doing the thing. And then you have like the product, right? Product's pretty easy. You guys either have your products or your services. Um, and I, we could recover that if we needed to. Um, but the uh, we talked about video, which is basically for the illustration here, that's the more or less the sales and the marketing side of things. And today we're going to talk about what's in the middle. So let me share this screen and see if I can make this small enough. We can see, do we see a little diagram and maybe some background here? Uh, somebody give me a one in the chat if you can see my screen. Sweet, David can see it. All right, cool. So this is just like really quick. We talked about video already, which is kind of how we get, not kind of, it is how we get our traffic, our uh, people that are interested. Uh, this would be the equivalent of um, your sales and marketing side of things. And we have our products, which you're probably either selling your own products or services or some sort of an affiliate product or um, one of Chase's as an affiliate, that sort of thing. And so this is the middle. Ignore this bridge page thing here for a second. I just Today, we're going to talk about the CRM. And I just want to give a quick visual explanation of it because some people are visual, some people are audio, uh, auditory. And so it depends on how you like. But the landing page is what we're going to talk about today. So landing page is when we get our video, we got to get them somewhere. We got our traffic, right? We're going to send them to a landing page. Landing page or a squeeze page, it's got different names. It's how we capture their email address. And we've talked about the importance of the email address so that we can continue to market to them. But basically, the email address sets on this side of what's called the CRM, which is CRM is a fancy term for customer relationship management. It doesn't really mean anything for us, except for it's kind of like um, think about it as a server or as an automation system that kind of sets out there and does everything. The landing page is built it's built inside of what we call the CRM and it feeds into the CRM. So it gives the email addresses to the CRM. And then the CRM has some automations that happen inside of it. And it sends out emails to our potential customers, the ones that have entered their email address in the first place, along with some other automatic things. And then ultimately they can click the link and buy. So what does that really mean? Well, we need a CRM in order to make this work because the CRM basically encompasses all of this. It's, it's pretty much the whole middle core section of everything that makes it work. And again, just revisiting quickly why that's important. You could send things straight from the video, straight straight to your product, but you lose the chance to market to them more than once. So you can't market to them more than one product, whatever they saw the video about, that's what they get. And the rule of seven says that you need to see something seven times before they're gonna buy usually anyways. Plus not everybody even, you know, they might be, they might, click over or something and then just be busy that day or whatever. So you got to catch them at the right time. So that's part of the rule of seven. It's like timing. Like, I don't know how you guys are. I'm sure that sometimes you're busy and sometimes you're in a mode to like actually make a decision. I usually don't buy stuff the first time around. In fact, I'm pretty meticulous about it. I actually will write it down on a piece of paper and then sleep on it. And like, I mean, if it's something really basic, fine. But usually I just don't make fast decisions on buying just because then I have to worry about it afterwards that I really make the right choice and all that sort of stuff. So system.io is our, let's stop for a second. Are we making sense so far? Give me a one hey, if this kind of makes sense. Yep. Hey Ryan, can we ask um, everyone here, how many people are actually getting views in the first place to send traffic to a landing page? Yeah, let's um, I'm getting give you views. one if you're getting views. Oh, give you a one, okay. I'm getting views. Well, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Anders is getting views, awesome. Yeah. 
Anders Who getting, else is views? getting views. Yeah. Does anybody want to share their account just so we can check it out? Because I think one of the one of the things that I've been seeing is that a lot of people are like, well, you know, I want to set up the email, I want to set up the whole system, but if you can't drive traffic, there's not going to be anything to set up, right? And so one of the biggest things right now I think we should focus on is how do we get these accounts warmed up so we can start driving traffic to these landing pages in the first place. And so one of the things we need for that is we need analytics, right? Like we need to see how much, how many clicks are we actually getting from our videos in the first place? And then the other thing we need to see is like, how many views are we getting on our actual videos? So does anybody want to share? We have two people in here, Preston and Philip, and actually it looks like Anders too, that are getting views on their account. Um, would you mind if we took a look at the account? Yeah, it's fine. How do I do that? How do I share that? Do you have a link to it? Side hustle, um, Phil, on TikTok. Uh, um, I, I don't quite know what you mean. I'm in the uh, I'm in the app right here. Is there something for me to copy and share, or? Well, are you using TikTok? What are you What are you yeah, using? Yeah, I'm, I'm on TikTok now. I don't think I've really gotten many views outside of TikTok. And what I've been doing is basically repurposing your short form content. I've got about six videos up so far. Right. Um, and I've got uh, some of them were were uh, banned. A few of them were not allowed, but a few of them actually have a couple hundred views each. So right. um, I'm happily to I'll share it, but I don't know how. <laughs> well, you could just share the name, like the at name, kind of like. Side sure. Yeah. Here. Okay. So I'm uh, yeah. My business name here is Online Opportunity Oasis. That's me. I'm a yellow duck. Okay, <clears> we'll <throat> do that one in a second. Um, if you want to type it in the chat, or I can go back sure. in a second. So. Yep. Okay. So right here we got. It looks like uh, Phil's or Philip's uh, repurposing some of the content and we're, he's getting some views. Look at this one has 5,000 views, 200 views, repurposing Ryan's video here, 176 views. So it's not bad. Um, we got a link tree here. Uh, Philip, do you have any idea or is it, do you go by Phil or Philip? Either way. Do you have any idea what, how many clicks you're getting to this actual link here? Phil, okay. Because the number one thing is like, we wanna make sure that we're getting traffic. That's like number one. So like before we even set up any sort of CRM or email or anything, if you're not getting more than a few hundred visits a day, like clicks, most of the time it's not really worth worrying about. Um, now, if you're getting lots and lots of clicks, that's when it's like, okay, we need to make sure we're capturing a lot of this traffic. But if you're just getting a few, that's why the number one priority right now, okay, Ryan's got Anders' account. The number one priority right now is just getting the views and getting the clicks, okay? And so again, to get the views, we need to repurpose the content and then we need to get the clicks to the links that we are providing to people. Let's check out, uh, it looks like this is a TikTok search, Ryan. Oh, is this it? Okay, so we got a couple, look at this, brand new account, 200 views per video. That's not bad at all. Um, and I want to actually share something with you. Let me bring this up really quick and sorry to kind of hijack this, Ryan. I just wanted to talk about this because um, I've been hearing a lot in the group, you know, people are saying, well, you know, I can't, I can't do this until I get my email set up. And I'm telling you, most people are not in a position where they even need email right now. They are in a position where they need to do what, look at this, what Anders is doing, what Phil's doing. These are brand new accounts, right? 200 views, 200 views. Guess how much traffic they're probably getting right now? Probably not a whole lot. This has probably maybe got a couple clicks. And so the number one priority right now is getting the account warmed up. It's getting, and it's what we're doing, Ryan. And actually, if you could, Ryan, I'd like you to talk about at some point in here, whenever you have the chance, what our plan is, because we actually have a plan. We're doing what they're doing right now with brand new accounts. And we're actually proving that this is going to work because we are seeing people in our, in our classes do it. It's working. We know it's going to work. Do you want to talk about that at all, Ryan? Sure. Can you hear me? Yes. I think it was. Okay, cool. Yeah. So basically we've done testing that's been sort of um, let's just say we've done a bunch of sporadic testing. It's kind of just, does this work? Does that work? Does this work? Does that work with different accounts on different platforms like YouTube and TikTok, et cetera. Right. And so now what we're actually working on is basically streamlining that and organizing it so that it can scale. Right. So we can add layers and layers of accounts. So for example, 
we have the um regardless of the layer we're going to take a group of accounts so like you have your account for example like anders or phil for example and then you maybe you have a tiktok a instagram a facebook a um sorry i'm losing this uh youtube maybe you have a snapchat maybe you have a twitter maybe you have a, the list goes on right so the top maybe six eight ten twelve platforms or whatever of the so uh, in social that you can post on right yeah so linkedin is another one um that i didn't mention and that mention and then also pinterest and so basically we're doing repurposed content so we are we've talked about it a little bit in the classes so far where we hired somebody on fiverr we're also experimenting with having a va um actually do it and we've had fantastic results with multiple vas that we've trained to repurpose the videos and all it is is taking our our long form videos the 15 20 minute youtube videos and then clipping out sections that makes sense right that you can promote and then putting your link in there right so you we're already making the video and you just make a vertical clip of it and so you just pull out that segment which we already did talk about so i think you guys understand what i'm talking about but if you don't um we can talk about that more but so you grab a clip of it and then you scale it out across the different ones so you take that one clip and you make it into a video 55 seconds whatever and you put your link in there so whatever phil you would put your link in there to your um to wherever it's going right to your affiliate or to your landing page wherever you it winds up being in the end but it can change over time um so you put your link in there same thing for everybody and then you post that same video across linkedin snapchat twitter youtube pinterest instagram facebook etc right so you just post it on all the platforms and then you go to the next one and you take the next video of ours because we have i looked the other day there's like 1900 videos a huge portion of which are long videos and we're doing one every single day and so you just take a new video every day or as often as you do it you may be doing it two or three times a day whatever depending on how much time you have and you just clip a new section you know you clip a new section and you put your call to action in there and maybe your call to action maybe you're promoting one product and you go for a while and you're promoting a different product and that doesn't really matter so it doesn't matter if you change products along the way it doesn't matter if you change urls like maybe you're promoting one thing and then you get a redirect domain none of that really matters these are all factors that can change what matters is that you're consistent and it matters that you consistently produce results we're not necessarily saying that you have to consistently get videos that get a million views but that you're just putting it up so like with phil's account or andrew's account so you're getting the 200 the 200 the 200 because as you warm up that account the platforms are going to start displaying your videos to more people so when they put your video in front of more people that helps the videos to grow so then instead of 200 views and it's 300 and 400 and 500 and then as you go across platforms different videos are going to work differently on different platforms they just are I mean every time we do videos some videos will do horrible not horrible but they'll do much smaller on one when I say horrible it's like a few thousand views so apologize I apologize for my uh negative talk there sometimes I'm I'm talking in really big numbers because I'm working at really big things here so you get smaller and then you get one that gets like 10,000 views on a different platform and then it gets like 100,000 views on a different platform and the same video we can post on one platform and get like a million views and post it on another platform and get like 2,000 views so it's important to not just so like I realized that TikTok is an easy place to start and I'm you should absolutely use TikTok but it's important to also not waste all that work so if you've made the video you clipped out the video it doesn't matter how you make the video at the end of the day whether you're clipping our video whether someone on Fiverr is doing it whether you have a VA do it whether you whether you make your own video entirely it doesn't really matter you want to make sure that you use it do it consistently and use it across all the platforms so that you have the chance for a video on a particular platform to get a lot more views and in general even if even if a video just gets if it got 200 views on every platform and you post it on 10 platforms that's 2000 views rather than posting it on just one platform and the work is already done so how i mean how long does it take to log into uh, another account and post it i have some examples too ryan so let me just go through here so first of all i think i showed everybody this before um this was before we started doing short form content so like literally last year two days ago we were getting 20 email opt-ins a day and that's with we had 50 60 000 subscribers on youtube we were we had all these people um you know, in our Facebook group, we had all kinds of things that would make you think that we were getting tons of email opt-ins, right? Literally 20 email opt-ins a day. Okay. Now these days we're getting like 500 to a thousand email opt-ins a day. 
And the difference between those days and these days, literally one year later, right? Having followers then and having followers now, the only difference is the short form content that we did, okay? And this isn't just us going and making short form content ourselves. We're also getting these leads from doing the repurpose content that we're giving to you. So a lot of people will say, you know, it's going to take too long to do this. I don't want to be in the video. It won't work. You know, I don't want to show my face. I did a poll on, on YouTube yesterday and there was all these objections. Right. And so I'm telling you, this is really the best thing. And I, we could honestly, we could talk about things that are less profitable, right? We could say, oh, well, you know, use AI content to run a blog. That's more uh, appealing to a lot of people, but it doesn't work as well. And so honestly, video is one of the least appealing things that you can sell to people, tell people to do, but it's one of the, it, I wouldn't be so crazy about it if it wasn't the easiest way to actually become successful. So, uh, I'm going to show you a couple people, this guy, Aaron, he, he joined our classes. He made like $2,800 in sales in the last like week or two, literally the last week. I think it was, he made $1,400, 50% gross commissions and look at this guy's account. So this is his TikTok account. It's got 10,000 followers. He's not doing anything. He's giving a VA $200 a week to take this content and repurpose it on this TikTok account. He doesn't even post the content himself. Somebody goes and edits the video and reposts it just on TikTok. And look at these videos. Some of them got 29,000 views, 22,000 views, 32,000 views, 165,000 views, okay? He's not doing anything. He's not editing the video. He's not choosing the video. He's not uploading the video. He's literally doing nothing. And he made $2,800 in sales. Who is that? His name's Aaron, uh, Aaron Beatles. He's in, he's, in, he's in the live chat in our group. Uh, that's how many leads he got from that account. 1,495. I even asked him yesterday because I wanted to make sure that what I was seeing was correct. And I said, hey, man, can you explain really quick how you're getting views on your account? You just hired someone on Fiverr to repurpose your content, right? He said, yep, LOL, that sums it up. My accounts are all linked above. She doesn't even work too, too much. I said, that seems pretty easy, right? He said, it is. I've done very little. So the thing that blows me away is that we have somebody like Aaron who's literally doing nothing and making thousands of dollars in sales and people still aren't taking action. And it's like, how much easier can we make it? And I'm not saying that certain people aren't working. I'm just saying that there are people that are watching this stuff and they go, well, it's probably not going to work or it's going to take too long. Right. It's not like Ryan and I right now we have, we're hiring VAs to basically ex do exactly what is being done for Aaron with his VA. And we're getting people to build out our accounts, repurpose content. Why? Because it works. That's why. It's the easiest way, I think. So we have another guy, David Wilkinson. You guys probably seen this guy talking about him all the time. He made about $1,600 in sales. 50% is $862 in commissions. He posted a couple of our videos on Facebook on his Facebook personal profile. He now has 5,000 followers on Facebook. And look at this, his first two videos. Remember, most people are gonna say, well, I can't just, this is gonna take too long. It's not gonna work right away. His first two videos he ever posted, Reels on Facebook, got 40,000 views and 171,000 views, okay? And $1,600 in sales, right? So like this isn't magic. The magic is you do something and you get a result right? It, it, think about if Aaron or B David or anybody were to start posting this on multiple platforms. You got YouTube shorts, you got Instagram reels, you got Facebook reels, you got TikTok. Aaron got success just from TikTok. David got success just from Facebook. It takes two extra seconds to post on the other platforms. And I'm not, I'm not trying to call them out. I'm just saying the amount of effort that it takes to do this is so small that it literally doesn't make sense why people don't do it. It just doesn't make sense to me. So how do we do it? I'm just going to recap. We go to the long form video. We copy the video URL. We bring it over to a YouTube MP4 downloader. You can Google it on Google. There's plenty of them. We download the video. 
We put it in a cap cut. We clip a 60 second portion. We put our link and that's it. Now look at, this is a brand, this is another new account. I've created multiple new accounts because I wanna to prove to you that you can create a new account. I've done this multiple times. I've taken an account last year from zero to 100,000 followers on TikTok. I took an account this year from zero to 100,000 followers on TikTok. I'm building up new accounts, zero to 1,000 followers within weeks. And the reason why is partially because I want to have multiple accounts, but partially I want to show you that you can take brand new accounts with repurposed content and build them and have them start building traction, start getting views, start getting sales, start getting opt-ins. Okay. So this is a new account. We, I started uh, repurposed content. Look, 221 views, 200 views. And that's kind of what we're seeing with, um, we saw with Anders and with Philip. they're getting around the same amount, right? You start out getting 100, 200 views. That's totally normal. And in fact, it's good. 200 views is a lot more than you were getting before, right? And so when you first start an account, that's what it's going to look like. And so a lot of people go, well, I'm only getting a few hundred views. My video didn't get a million views like Sheila's video or like Aaron's video or whatever. Okay, that's fine. Sometimes they get a million views. Sometimes they get hundreds. Like it's just part of building up a new account. Most accounts don't just take off day one. You have to think about these platforms. What are they doing? They're trying to bring in new people, but they can't trust those people right away because they could be, you know, trying to harm their users. So they have to slowly distribute views unless you post something that algorithmically just blows up, which a lot of the time it's not going to happen. So also on that account, look at that. The videos before these ones that got a couple hundred views, some of them got, uh, you know, 10,000, 19,000. Now I want you to see something here. This guy is not me, right? Some of you know this guy's name is Paul James. He's like one of the original, you know, OG people on uh, YouTube. Started talking about Google Maps and all that stuff before everybody else. Why is he on my pro on this profile? Well, I did a test. Okay, there's another test that I did. Remember how I said take our content, repurpose it, it'll get views. Well, I wanted to prove that I could take somebody else's content like Paul's and repurpose it and get views. So what did I do? I took one of his popular videos. I repurposed the content. I posted on here. Now it didn't just get 4,700 views on TikTok. I actually forgot to take a screenshot. I should have done this, but on Facebook, it got hundreds of thousands of views. Same exact video, only got a couple thousand on TikTok, got hundreds of thousands of views on Facebook. Why? Because the more content you post on these multiple platforms, the more likely one of them is going to take off and you're going to get traffic and you're going to get views. Okay. So that's why it's so important that you don't just go and say, well, I posted on TikTok. It didn't work. Who cares? We have like eight accounts on TikTok. One of them gets banned. Who cares? We have more. We have also 10 different social profiles on different platforms, Facebook, you know, YouTube, Instagram. So we're not worried about just TikTok. Okay. Don't worry about one platform. You want to think about it like a, a, a table, right? If you have a table and one of the freaking legs is missing, the table generally still stands and you can rebuild the table before the whole thing falls over. If you have a one-legged table, the table's not even going to stand in the first place. And so if you're relying on one leg, on one social profile, on one TikTok, and it breaks, well, guess what? You never really had a table in the first place. So you need to focus on building multiple legs, multiple things for your business because you also want to think about it this way too. You want to diversify your assets. If something breaks, you want to be able to fall back on other things. If you lose your YouTube or you lose your TikTok or whatever, okay, you have an email list. You can still make money. So don't rely on one thing. So we got all these different profiles, right? We got LinkedIn, Snapchat, Twitter, YouTube, Pinterest, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. We, I mean, the list goes on. It goes forever, right? Spotify. I don't know. Okay. Now, these are all these, there's a bunch of different options here. You don't have to go and do this every day, right? Look at Aaron. Aaron has a VA, virtual assistant, right? For $200 a week. And we, we can show you how to hire virtual assistants too. Um, but he's having the virtual assistant create the content, right? Starting out, the virtual assistant takes some of our content, clips it, turns it into a TikTok video, and then sends traffic to his offer. Now, one of the things that Aaron should do is that because right now he's just get it going on TikTok, right? Where, where TikTok's not even in here. Let's say this is TikTok. He's just posting on TikTok. He could have the VA go and then post on all these other platforms. Guess what? It takes zero extra seconds per day for Aaron to tell his VA to do that. 
So you can pretty much outsource all of this stuff to somebody else if you don't want to do it yourself. Now, if you don't want to spend the money, then just do it yourself. I do. I, I personally post when I make a TikTok, I go and I post on all these platforms because it takes me a couple seconds. When I go and upload on YouTube, it takes just as much time to upload on Instagram. So I just drag them all in and they all upload together at the same time. It takes a couple, couple extra minutes a day for me to post everywhere. Okay. Now, remember, you could be doing this times five. So what does that mean? So Anders right now has an account with one TikTok, right? And it it's getting 200 views per video. Now imagine Anders went and made five TikToks and posted five repurposed clips a day. Well, he'd be getting five times 200 views because that's what he's getting right now per day just off of TikTok. That's a thousand views a day with, a brand new, with five brand new accounts. Now imagine he's taking those five same clips and then posting them between five different social profiles. He has five LinkedIn's, five Snapchats. Now I'm, I'm not saying that this isn't going to be time consuming, right? This is why you hire people to help you create these accounts, uh, you know, posts. So that way you don't have to worry about going and logging into all these different places. But this is what we're doing in our business. We're actually doing this right now. We're taking five different brands with five different, with, with times five, right? Times five LinkedIn's, times five Snapchats, times five Twitter. And it's like a magnifying glass. When you get all of these platforms going and you have repurposed content going everywhere. Imagine Anders, if you had five TikToks alone, that's a thousand views a day with brand new accounts. And then you have all these other social profiles, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Remember, looked at, remember David, he had one so personal profile that got 160,000 views just on one video. Imagine what would happen if you had all of these things going. And if you started warming up these accounts, so that way they algorithmically started really blowing up in the feeds because again, the hardest part is getting your first thousand followers. Once you get your first thousand followers, you generally get out of the, um, jail, the, uh, algorithmic jail. And so when you're, when you're starting out and you have, when you have less than a thousand followers, generally your accounts are not going to reach anybody. You're going to get maybe a hundred views, 200 views, but guess what? When I started, and even I'm sure when Ryan started YouTube and we were doing video, if we got a couple hundred views, that would be a good day. At least it was for me. I don't know about you, Ryan, but uh, I was not yeah. when, when we were doing long form and, and, you know, back when YouTube, like we were first doing videos, or at least when I was first doing videos, a couple hundred views on a long form video, I'd spend 20 minutes on a video was a good day for me. Anders now can literally, and, and whoever in here can literally take our long form content, hand it to somebody else, have them repurpose it. And on one platform, just TikTok alone, you already get the 200 views on a brand new account. It's a lot easier. And I think that's why we're more resilient or at least why I'm more resilient with this stuff where I will go and spend a bunch of time doing it because it's so much easier now than it ever was. And I think a lot of people don't realize that because they weren't back in the YouTube days trying to do YouTube videos and get views. It is so much easier to get views now. It's absolutely ridiculous. And, and I think that it's so easy that people don't even believe that it could be that easy because they haven't done it yet. But I'm telling you, it's extremely easy. So can you at least see how easy it is to repurpose trending content and get views with it if you use this method. If you take content that we give you, you po post it to these different platforms and you give it to some sort of VA or somebody to go and repurpose it. I mean, you're looking at what, $5 a day and, and zero seconds of your time or five minutes a day and zero dollars. Like, can you see that? It, it, it should be pretty simple, right? So what did we cover already? We covered taking a long form video clipping a portion of it and post, posting it to multiple platforms. That's pretty straightforward, right? You give me a yes if that's straightforward because I want to make sure we're all on the same page. One, David, cool. Okay. Should we set up multiple accounts on each platform or start with setting up one account on each platform? You want to start with, 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 so most people don't even have one account that they're posting to every day. They don't even have a TikTok that they're posting. You want to start with making an agreement with yourself that you're going to post one video a day, one short a day and start with one platform. If you can do that, then get the second platform. But again, you can't double down. You can't multiply by zero, right? So a lot of people, they go, oh, I'm going to go from zero to a hundred. Don't go from zero to one and then go from one to two and then go from two to four, double down on the thing first, but you can't double something that you're not doing. So do it first, make an agreement, make a list every single day. What do I do? I write down on a list. I need to do this. And I rewrite it every day. I go, I need a thousand views. 
I need a thousand views. I need a thousand views. Every single day I say, I need a thousand views. And guess what? I do something for that. And so write it down every day. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. You will start doing it or you'll take it off the list and you'll do the next thing that's more important than that. Okay. Uh, all right. It's going to take too long. That's one of the biggest objections I hear. People always say, Chase, I would do this, but it's going to take too long. Well, there's an actual secret to warming up your accounts fast. And this is what I do on my new accounts. And it's what took one of my accounts from zero to 800 followers within a couple days. Okay. And it's not buying followers. It's not like going and um, doing anything sneaky. We're legitimately getting followers that want to follow us. And so most platforms have an ad option where you can boost your posts. It doesn't cost a ton of money. You can do this for really cheap. I'll show you how much money I spent, but you can get a thousand followers very quickly with this option. And it's a lot easier to get views once you get past those thousand followers. That's when you get out of the algorithmic jail. So here's a TikTok account that I boosted. Uh, oh, I'm supposed to show that account right here. So this is another account. Remember, I, I've done this with multiple accounts. This is another, this is like one of my eight accounts just on TikTok alone. Okay. It's 816 followers, no bio yet, no link. This video got 26,000 views, 28,000 views, 13,000 views. It's repurposed content and it's a brand new profile, 816 followers. Okay. I spent a total, I wish I could mark this out so you could guess. I spent a total of $40 on this. Okay. So you don't have to spend an insane amount of money to be able to get a bunch of followers and be able to get out, out of algorithmic prison, you're probably looking at a total of a hundred bucks to get out of the algorithmic jail on an account. And I'm talking about TikTok. I'm talking about Instagram. You can run ads on YouTube. You can run ads everywhere, anywhere, all these platforms. What do you, what do you think they want? They want money, right? They want the same thing we want. They want money. And so you can build these new accounts. Now, let me show you something. This is a brand new account, right? This was one that I didn't run ads on. It only got 119 views. These ones got a lot more. And so even if you just wanted to run ads and get views and traffic, you could still do that. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. So here, let's talk about how to do this. So on TikTok, if you go to your video and you click on the little dots on your account, there's a little dots right here. Oh, that's Instagram. Basically the same thing on, on uh, TikTok there's going to be a little fire symbol. It's going to look like this. It's going to say promote, okay? Now, what you want to do, if you want to get out of the algorithmic prison, is you're going, to, you're going to say, you're going to click on more followers, okay? So this is going to promote your video to people that are more likely to follow you. I have TikTok choose for me. And again, this is a video we're boosting, right? It's not an account we're boosting. We're clicking on a video that we want to reach people that are more likely to follow us. And then it's going to ask us how much we want to spend. For, I think that's like 10 bucks or something, you get an estimated one to 5,000 views. And think about this 5,000 people seeing your video, you're probably gonna get a few hundred people following you if you get that many views. Maybe a little bit less, maybe 100, 150. Okay. Now, $10 a day, yeah, 800 to 3,000 views. Okay. So $10 for 800 to 300 to 3,000 views one day, and you're gonna click on start. Now this just charges your whatever. If you have an Apple, it just charges your Apple Pay. If you're on Android, it charges. It, you don't. You don't have to create an ad account or anything. This isn't technical. You don't have to do anything weird. Like you literally just it it, it pings you and it says, "Would you like to pay the App Store ten dollars?" And that's it. Okay. Same thing on Instagram. If I go to my Instagram profile, post a reel, little dots right here, right? It's gonna say boost. It's gonna say, "What do you want?" I'm gonna say more profile visits because I want the followers going to ask me how much $5 a day. Look at this for $5 over one day, 8,000 to 22,000 people reached. It's a lot of people. And it's because this content, the reels, the short form content, they, these platforms want their users to see this content because it's very good for keeping them on the platform. And so if you're running ads to a short form piece of content, usually you can get a lot of views and followers for cheap. Okay. So can you see how easy it is to boost an account to a thousand followers with a few bucks? I mean, it's not anything, it's not rocket science, right? We're just clicking on a few dots. We're spending five to 10 bucks on, you know, every repurposed video until we get to a thousand followers. Pretty easy, right? So 
that's kind of what I wanted to show you today. I'm still working on this presentation. This is actually to promote our, our, our program and it's going to promote the landing page, that kind of thing. But I wanted to give you an example of kind of like how this works, because I think some people are like, well, I need, I need to have an email list. How much of what we just talked about was an email list? It's not important. It's more important. Yeah, zero. Thank you guys. It's more important that you get started and you start doing something every single day and you start focusing on building out these accounts. You start focusing on warming them up. I don't care how much, how many um, things you have set up. I don't care if you have your email list set up. I don't care if you have your automation set up. I don't care any of that. Until you get to over a thousand followers, do not worry about it. Get the views first, get people following. How are you going to sell something to somebody in an empty room? It doesn't make sense. Okay. And so stop thinking about trying to be perfect and start thinking about taking action and getting people into a room. Then you can sell things. Okay. So until you get to a thousand followers, stop trying to build an email list. Just focus on getting the followers, getting some views, and you can still add your links. You can still send people to an affiliate link, right? So like when you're doing your videos in the video, you could say, Hey, go to AI profits course, or, you know, you know, AI cash cow course.com. It just goes straight to the landing page temporarily. And as you start to bring in views and you start, and then you set it up. Okay. Um, but does that make sense to everybody? And, and Ryan, do you want to jump in here at all? Yeah. I mean, it, it's just, uh, I'm just reading a comment here from Edgar progress versus perfection. I think that's really it. Um, so I had a Tony Robbins coach at one point, and he always said that progress, not perfection. And I think that um, the thing I used to say is I'm a recovering perfectionist. And I think a lot of times we just get stuck up on like how we can be efficient, which is important, but you know, optimizing uh, a, an empty room for sales, as Chase said, is a really great example. I actually really like that. I've never heard that before. Um, I, I rather like it. And so yeah, you're right, Steve. Consistency is key. And it really is. It's hard. So like, um, I think the list is important. I have a list as well. And I even take it a step farther. And so um, this is something I've really worked on this year specifically is just saying no. And I think that the challenge is that there's a lot of things to say yes to. So we can say yes to, you know, going over here and doing this with email or going over here and this overcomplicating it. But it's really, if you watch anybody like Alex or Mosey or Gary Vaynerchuk or Tony Robbins or anybody, they all will tell you, at the end of the day, one of the things that they say is that it's just about saying no. And so my list is a no list. Um, I specifically have my list is I say no to everything that's not on the list. And if it's not on the list, I don't do it. And so I think that's really important for consistency. And I want to add in there too, that, you know, it's not always going to be something where you're going to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Okay. So like I recently took about a month and a half off and we stopped doing shorts and you'll notice like this class, we have 33 people. Our last class has had like over a hundred live in the class. What's the difference? Well, took a break, stopped doing shorts, stopped getting as many people. And so I could say to myself, well, it just doesn't work anymore. Right. I should just give up. I should do something else. And that's what I think a lot of people do is they fail. They don't get the result and they go, I'm just going to give up. I'm just going to do something else. And so, even when you're doing well, right? Even when you're making money or when you're getting uh, people following you and, you're, and everything seems to be going well on the outside, you can still have struggles. You can still have like, I'm, this isn't working, right? And like, that's what's happening for us right now. It's like, we're like, okay, well, what do we need to do? And the one thing that you always, that, that I always kind of turn to, right? The thing that brought me from, from $1,000 a day, $10,000 a day, or like $100 a day, $1,000 a day, like whatever the thing was that I got to, was two things. Number one, I stayed consistent no matter how I felt, right? Like the other day, uh, we went to the gym and it was like, I don't want to go to the gym. Who cares? Go, just go, just do 10 minutes, do something. And then the other thing is doubling what you already are doing, right? So if you can, don't go for 10 X, don't go for hundred X. What are you currently doing? Like, for example, Anders, I don't know if he left, but, uh, he did. Oh, there he is. Sorry. It, I couldn't see you. He's doing one TikTok video a day, right? Okay. Well, what can you do? Two, okay. What can you do to double 
that output. You can go and start posting on these other platforms, right? I don't know if you already are, but what I'm saying is that there's always going to be a way for you to double down. And there's always going to be a way for you to keep staying consistent and doing what you say you're going to do. And if you do those two things, it's not a coincidence, right? So I know that I'm going to make more money at some point. The problem is I don't know how. And so the thing is, is that I don't need to know how in order to do it. And, 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 and the reason why is because I know if I just keep doing the thing that I said I was going to do, if I keep staying consistent, if I keep doubling down, eventually I'll figure it out. And so it's not about having the answer. It's not about knowing what you're supposed to do. It's about saying, I don't know what I'm doing. This sucks. I don't want to do this and doing it anyways, because you said you're going to do it because you know, consistency is what creates results. And you know that you're just going to double down on what is going to bring you personally to the next level. Not like somebody else, not what's going to bring Chase to the next level. This isn't a race with Chase. This isn't a race with Ryan. This isn't a race with any of us. It's a race with ourselves. And so the more we can focus on being as consistent as we can with ourselves and doubling down, the easier it is to figure out what the answer is that we're looking for and to get the result. And so that's the part of the reason I'm saying this is because I'm in the same boat as you. Like I, I'm, I might be at a different part in my journey, but I feel just as uncertain and I'm still doing it anyways. Okay. So I still wake up with uncertainty. I still wake up with, I don't know what to do. I don't know the best thing, but I do it anyways. So, um, any issues, duplicate content. If I upload one or one short to two, you don't upload the same. Okay. So one of the things we're doing, and Ryan, do you want to talk about this? So what is our game plan, Ryan, for our long form content, handing it to the VAs and having them post across multiple accounts? So each, each brand group, I'm going to call it a brand group. So a group of accounts. So like that, and what that means is like one YouTube, one TikTok, one Instagram, one LinkedIn, et cetera. Right. And then the second group, like brand group number two is another YouTube, another TikTok, et cetera. So each brand group is going to get its own short. So let's say I have a long video and we'll call it long video a, right. And we can, you can do this. So there's different ways to do this. And the only wrong answer is what doesn't work, but let's say you have long video a and you clip out short video a out of that right and you pro post short video a to all the accounts in brand group one and then let's say you can either take that same long video a and you know get another short out of it because they're like 20 minute videos so you can get a 55 second video out of it or you can just go to a different video if it's easier like it doesn't matter so you can go to video b for example and then you get short b out of that and you post short b across brand group two you don't want to take short a and post it on youtube a for brand group one and on YouTube for brand group two. And I wouldn't like, it doesn't make sense to me to mix them and post like YouTube brand group one and then TikTok brand group two, just like stay within consistency. Like it just, that's how we're going to do it to stay organized just because it makes it simple. But um, yeah, you don't want to post it. If you post it the same exact video across multiple accounts, then that's going to be duplicate content. Yeah. So definitely don't want to do well, that. Well, but you can between multiple social profiles, right? So you could post the same Correct. video on Twitter and then on, on TikTok and then, but you don't want to post the same video on Twitter and then Twitter account too. You want to make sure that you're repurposing it. Let's say you have three different brand accounts, right? With three, let's say you have 30 social, social profiles total. And on, on each brand, you want to make sure that you have a short that's going to each of those socials just to that brand. And then you have another short that's different going to the separate brand and social accounts associated. Does that make sense to everybody? And so remember the, re the reason why this is so cool. First of all, <clears throat> we don't have anybody doing this, including ourselves yet, right? This is a new thing that we're, we're trying to do ourselves from what we've seen just from some of our students like Aaron and David, with one social profile and one repurposed content a day, they've already made thousands of dollars in sales. Now imagine what would happen if we started really doubling down on having multiple brands re with repurposed content across multiple platforms. It could be absolutely insane. And so the hardest part though is what? Warming up the accounts. And what's the hardest part about warming up the account? Being consistent. And so you know, you might have some roadblocks. You might have TikTok say, well, you know, we don't like your account. We don't like your content. You're banned. And then you could say, well, you know, I'm just going to give up. Or you could say, hey, look, it's part of the process. 
It's part of what we're figuring out. What, what didn't work here? Oh, well, you know, they don't like this type of content, so we won't post it. So part of it though, remember, is that realizing that it's probably not going to work perfectly in like the way that you want it to, right? Everybody's scared of things not going to according to plan. It's the people that expect things not to go to according to plan are the people that figure it out. And so don't expect everything to work, expect everything to not work and do it anyways. And so we've talked about this before, but go into it thinking that you're going to probably fail and that failure is a good thing. Uh, my TikTok account's going to suck for the next two months. I'm going to do it anyways, right? Do it anyways, because eventually it's going to work. Um, and that's kind of like what I'm thinking with these new accounts is like, we're probably going to fail on some of these accounts. It might not work. Who knows? We're just going to do it anyway. So I think it'll work though, Ryan. What do you think? No, it will work because the tests already work and all the science is there. And it, it, at the end of the day, the algorithms want views. And if you post videos, you're going to get views. And if you're consistent, then they know you're consistent and they see things. And as you get followers and as your account grows, you're going to get more views. And the other thing is, is like you go as far as you can see and then you can see to go further because you get in the middle of it and you just you always do want to continue to be improving. Right. So so Mr. Beast, probably you guys know who Mr. Beast is. His name's Jimmy. Um, he's the biggest YouTuber. And to the point where he now has restaurants and brands and sells chocolate and Walmart and other products and stuff like that all out of YouTube. So he said, do 100 videos and then improve something every time. And so it. it it is important to be consistent. And I think that's the number one thing. Like you should just focus on like taking the action, but along the way, it's important to take a step back and be like, all right, so I did, you know, one, two, three, four, five videos. Okay. What can I improve? You know, maybe, maybe that's your, uh, maybe you realize that you're not leaving your call to action on the screen long enough or that you, I don't know. Right. So, oh, now I learned how to do. So here, I'll give you a perfect example for me. Okay. We've talked about cap cut, right? I can do a bunch of stuff in CapCut. I record stuff in OBS. I record stuff in Camtasia. I do editing and, and AI image generation and chat GPT. Like the list goes on. The tools, I'm very good at using tools and I'm good at learning them. However, one of the things that I just recently figured out in CapCut, it's not that I didn't couldn't have learned it earlier. It's that I just didn't, you know, you just have to learn in layers and give yourself a chance to learn one thing like a stair step and then learn one more thing and stack it on top of it and learn another thing and st keep stacking. It's just sounds. In CapCut under, um, and I'm not expecting you to learn this right now, but under audio, there's sound effects. And so you can actually, there's little, little whoosh sounds and stuff like that. So when something flies in or something like pops up on the screen or the words show up, you can just add a sound. And that's just like one example that I wasn't using. And so as you continue to do things, and if your VA is doing it, maybe you can give them feedback. So the way I was training the people on Fiverr to do it is say, go do it, right? They do a two or three videos and I look at them like, okay, let's improve one thing. And so I, I did like a two minute video. I was like, this is the one thing I want you to add. So add this. And then they added it. So can we, it, it's just about that. Can we actually talk about that, Ryan? Because I think um, it would be really helpful um, to cover, like, what are you, so we're hiring these people to help us create this short form content. How do we get them? Like, how do you hire them? What, what do you tell them? Right? Like, because a lot of people probably aren't hiring VAs yet. And so what are the things that people need to know when it comes to hiring and how do they, where do they go? Do they go to online jobs. They go to Fiverr. Like what's the best way to do this? Yeah. So I would start with Fiverr. So if you want the easiest path, I would start with Fiverr. You could also do Upwork. Fiverr is going to be pretty, pretty easy and simple to get started because somebody on Fiverr already has like this gig, right? And they already kind of define what's going on and they already set the parameters and, and they probably know what they're doing inside of that, right? If you go on Upwork, it's a little bit more, you could hire a video editor, right? And they probably know what they're doing, but it's a little bit more ambiguous. And then if you want online jobs PH, now we're into, um, which is a very valuable asset, by the way. And I definitely say that it's something you should do, could do, um, yeah. maybe should do. Ryan, do you want to show them some examples maybe of some orders that we've made and kind of the conversation around that? Yeah. So um, uh, I don't know that they're in there. Hang on. Let me pull it up here. Wrong account. How many How many people in here are, are planning on either they already are or they're planning on hiring somebody for, let's say, five bucks a video or something? to do it for them versus do how many people in here press two if you're planning on doing it yourself and there's no shame in either way i'm just curious 
one, one, one. Want to be learning both, two for now. Okay. <laughs> Doing both. Okay. That's fine. I mean, like, look, so one, one thing I want to tell you, by the way, is that on our main accounts, on the Chase Reiner account, on the Shine Ranker account that Ryan and I are building, we are doing everything manually. So we're doing the long form content manually and we're doing our shorts manually. We're, that means we're making them ourselves. So the reason why is generally when you make something yourself, you're going to be a little bit more meticulous about it. You're going to know what you want. You're going to, you're going to have some ideas on, you know, hey, this is what worked last time versus now. Where when you hire somebody, they're going to be a little bit more like, okay, well, I'm just going to throw this together and, and get my $5 that I, that you gave me. Right. So it might be good to do both. Right. And, and also one of the things that you want to think about, I think as well, is that at some point you might even want to just make the content yourself, right? If you're going through all this trouble of having to clip the content or hire somebody or any of that, it might be faster. Just pull out your cell phone, make a 60 second video. I'm not saying that you should, but there's so many different ways to do this, right? And you have choices and you have options. And, you know, at a certain point, you want to think, how can I double down on this? Right. And so for us, one of the ways to double down is we're manually doing our content on the main accounts, but then we also have on the side, these repurpose accounts that are going to bring us in views. Okay. So whatever doubling down looks like for you, you choose. Sorry, go ahead, Ryan. Yeah. So let me just show you here. Um, hang on. Too many grab the wrong window and it's moving everywhere. My fault. So um, if this is about version one is better than version none, right? So here's what happened. Basically, we went and picked um, like a Fiverr person and said, hey, can you make a video? They already had a gig going. Let me see if this brings it up. I don't know if it does. Yeah, so it's make fun and gaming TikToks or shorts, right? And Chase showed you in a different video um, how like basically you can just go up to here to search and you can just search for repurposed long video to short TikTok or something like that. And you can set your budget to, you know, like $5 or whatever you want. But uh, the word that I found when you're searching on Fiverr is repurpose. Like there's different words that people title it different things. But if you use the word repurpose, that is the um, the one that brings you the most people, right? And so literally what I went through here is that I just started, a lot of these people want you to message them first. So I just started popping them open in a new tab. And then I just hit contact me and I just type up a generic message that works for everybody and just contacting him. I will say, don't go completely crazy. Like I went through here and did like 50 of these at once and opened 50 windows and was going to message 50 people <laughs> and the Fiverr blocked my IP. Oh no. I was opening too many windows at once. So do like, do like five or 10 at a time. And so anyways, so you can see some of these coming through here and it was basically just, all right, basically we just ordered their gig to start and see what happens. Right. And they got pretty close. They did a pretty good job. So we come down here, we kind of talk do you about what's show going the on. You want to show the video they did that was like you said it's kind of close but not really there just as an yeah, example let me see if i can unless it's too difficult to find it um well i guess i guess the question i have is what made it not as good as it should be so it didn't have a strong call to action um that and this was the number one thing so we ordered so like when we went here, I can go here and show you this. We ordered a bunch of uh, all these different ones, right? We just went through to figure this out to start with and just ordered a bunch of videos and just said, you decide what to do, you know, make a short video out of this long video. And the number one thing across every single person was that they had no strong call to action. Um, and that's a common thing in business in general. People just don't understand the call to action. So they made the video, it kind of made sense. They had a good hook, the, they had a good opener because you know we tend to do good hooks in our long videos. So they're just using that. And the story part, the middle part is there, but at the end, they just kind of let it, you know, they just ended it and that was it. Because, because I talked to a bunch of these people and they all thought that the number one reason we were doing this was to get more followers. So they don't, if you're getting more followers, then it doesn't really matter. Or they would put at the very last slide of the video, you know, like, and follow for more, because that is the game that a lot of people play, which is fine. You know, getting more followers is fine, but we actually want to drive them off of Fiverr and YouTube and everywhere else and drive them to wherever we want them to go so that we can sell them something. Right. So, and so, so Ryan, would you by any chance, like, is there a way that in a minute or less, you could just go order a gig just so people could see like what they would write to the person and how they would just go and click on the order button? Yes. So let's say, um, here, let's just go back. The reason why I want to do this, by the way, is because I know some people are probably like, well, I've never ordered on Fiverr before. Right. So you start out by going to repurpose long form short to TikTok. You're going to filter by $5. So these are $5 gigs. Right. So whatever. So this guy has a review. So maybe here, but um, 
some of them, let's see. This one doesn't say contact me first. Some of them are, won't do anything. So what are they going to give you? They're going to give you 60 seconds for runtime, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so let's do, this is, in a, this is just for the sake of the project and our team here. Confirm and pay. Pretty straightforward. Just buying. We already had some money in the account. Otherwise, you get a plug. So you just click on the sort of you just click on the gig. You click buy, and then what do you type to them? What do you say for them to do? So most of this stuff, I'm just putting like business use, whatever, um, and, and ignore anything optional. And I give them this. So it is a it's a document. I just give them a link and I say, hey, here's what I need. Can, so can we this, give that? Can we give that document to everybody? Yeah, it's already in the members area. We did it like a week ago. Oh, I put cool. it up last week when you okay. were doing this. Awesome. Does everybody have access to that, to this this document here? Just give me a yes or a no. Maybe we could just reshare it in the chat. Um, yeah, we can put it in chat. So that seems pretty simple. That seems pretty straightforward to me. So you're basically just telling them, hey, Clip. And, and one of the things I want to remember, or I want everybody to remember too, is that rem like you don't have to necessarily, like, you can use our content or you can do this with your content, right? So like if you wanted to go and make a 20 minute video, you could get five to 10 clips out of it. If you don't want to make videos, don't do it. But remember, like there's always options. And so this is just what's going to work, whether you're doing your own content or you're repurposing our content, right? Right. And um, don't forget on this to make a copy, go to file and then uh, make a copy. You can make a copy different ways, but make a copy that way you can edit it and make it your own because like here some of ours we might want them to go into the facebook group or follow us for example and then i start putting more things so like i started editing these since things since the last class um but we might go a different direction so i might be telling them to do a call to action that you don't want so just you know make sure you make a copy of it that way you can edit it uh if you need to make small tweaks for your own stuff does, but basically does everybody know how to do a redirect link here by the way like get a domain and and redirect their affiliate link because if you don't one of the ways that you could do it as well is you could just say hey link in the comments and you could make the first comment your affiliate link if you don't have a redirect link that's the quicker way of doing it but if we don't have a, a re if you don't know how to do a redirect link yet we can cover that in one of the next ones not yet okay so i don't know if we covered that in this one yet ryan we might have to do that in the next session yeah no i was going to um, cover it today but we've kind of run out of time hey there can i raise my hand on this yes sir so I've actually been doing that and um, it's simple enough. It's just not a clickable link. So I put the link, I put my affiliate link like everywhere. I put it in my bio, I put it in the description, I put it in the comments. And then when people reply with yes or one as, as you sort of ask them to in the short video, then I reply to that also with my uh, affiliate link. So that's just what I've been doing, I guess. I don't know, I assume that's the best I can do for the moment, right? Yeah, let me just show really quick. It takes a couple seconds to do this. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so we'll do this in probably less than two minutes. You're going to go to godaddy.com. You're going to type in the domain name you want. So if you're promoting, let's say, uh, Shine Rank, or you're promoting Viral Video Vault, or you're promoting this course, AI Cash Cow, right? You would type in bestaicourse.com or whatever you want to call it. This might be taken. Click on search. Okay, it's uh, 70 bucks. Let's actually do the. Now, you usually want it to be three words. I'm just giving you this as an example. The best AI course.ai. Um, the best AI courses.com. We're just going to do that. See, it says one penny. Now, I'm, I'm just buying this so you can see this as an example. I'm not actually probably going to use this. We're going to click on continue. We're going to say no to all this stuff. We don't need any of it. We're going to say we want it for one year. I'm going to check out. 12 bucks for the year. Now, while we're there, remember, we need all of our affiliate links, right? Does everybody know how to get an affiliate link? Yes or no? No shame in, in no. It says we just bought it. So our affiliate link, no? Okay. So we have a sheet. I think it's in Scary Toolbots. I'm not sure uh, where the affiliates list is. I think it's in here. Let's see. Does anybody know where the affiliates list is, Ryan? 
Um, it's in the members area, but let me pull it up here and get an actual list. So all of our products have links, right? Affiliate links. And all you really have to do, I, I'll show you for Shine Ranker because it's the same links. You would go to one of the links, you'd click on become an affiliate. We're looking for the Thrivecart link here it is. It's going to ask you to make an account. So you say, I don't have a Thrivecart account yet. Come up with your random affiliate name. And then it's going to ask you to um, connect your PayPal. Once you connect your PayPal for the payouts, it's going to give you a link. Okay. So when you click on product, it's going to have a link right here. Once you get your PayPal account set up, that's going to be your link. Okay. So you're going to copy that link, click on copy. You're going to head over to your new domain that you just bought, right? So let's say it's the AI course that you copied the link for. And we're going to forward, they're going to say, I'll do this later. Go find the link, best AI course. So we're going to click on DNS here which stands for domain name service. And what that means is it's basically just how the domain resolves on the internet, the, the, the URL. We're going to click on forwarding here. We're just going to put our affiliate link, okay? So now we click on save. And what's going to happen is anytime somebody goes to that domain, the bestaicourses.com, they're going to go to that affiliate link, okay? Does that make sense? Pretty straightforward, right? Obviously, you can watch the replay and go back through that again if you missed it. But again, you're buying a domain, you're getting your affiliate link, and you're just putting it in there in the forwarding. Now, in your videos, you can say on TikTok, when you when you have a, a VA or whoever clip your videos, you can say, go to the you know bestaicourses.com for more information, right? You just put that on the text on the video, okay? Is everybody on the same page there? I, I could ask another question if you don't mind. Go ahead. Um, so your shorts, uh, sometimes you focus on different products. Sometimes it's viral video vault or shine ranker or AI cash course or whatever. Um, so one domain correlates to, or corresponds to one of those affiliate links, correct? Because I've been actually yes. promoting, I've been using different affiliate links depending on the video. Right. So, so, okay. So, yeah. So ideally you'd have a couple different, um, domains. So like, let's say you had one for viral video vault. You could say, you know, the best viral videos.com. And then let's say you had one for Shine Ranker, you could say the best SEO tool.com. And then, so maybe it costs you a, a total of 50 bucks to have these three or four different forwarding domains. Um, I think it's probably a good idea because it's easier to put that on the page. You get more traffic, but again, you could wait, you could say, in fact, it might even be better for your first videos, just to say at the end as the call to action, follow me for more and for more tips because then you'll get to the thousand followers. And then when you get the thousand followers, you know, it's going to be worth it to get those links in there because you're going to get, because you already have the traffic, right? Hmm. So again, I wouldn't worry about, you don't want to worry about sales or making money till you get to a thousand followers. And so, because you're not going to have anybody, again, it's going to be an empty room, right? You're going to be like walking around with a sign saying, I have this for sale and there's going to be nobody there. So start out, just focusing on getting the thousand followers. Once you do that, then maybe buy some of your links, buy whatever. If people start asking you in the comments, right? Oh, can I buy this? Then you can respond with the link. They'll go, you know, you could say, hey, links in the bio or I'll send you a DM or whatever. But when you start out, you're not gonna get a lot of people saying anything. So I would just focus on um, getting the followers first. Cool. Um, so is the advantage of having a domain versus just using my affiliate link in the comments? Is it just, it does it look better? Is it easier to get people to it's, go there? Or? It's less about the, the bio it's okay. So it's more about when you, when you do a video, right? So, um, let me show you when we do a TikTok. So, uh, I think this is, this is you, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So when you do a TikTok. At the end, usually you can put a little link right here. It says, get the full course now, bestaicourse.com, right? So they, they see that and they go, oh, I'm going to go type that in, right? Um, because right here, look, this is where it says head over to this. 
I would put, you know, head over to this link. Oh yeah, link in description. So you could actually, instead of saying link in the description, right? You could go and just give them the link on the actual screen because I'll, I'll show you, for example, if you look at my analytics here, and sorry, we're running a little over right now. Hopefully everybody doesn't mind. If you have to go, no worries. But here's my Google Analytics. I'll show you. So a lot of our visits, and, and I'll show you as well. This is when we stopped doing shorts and when we started doing shorts again. A lot of our visits are direct. That means that people are watching our short form content. They're seeing the link on the video. It says, go to this link, bestaicourse.com or whatever the link is. And then they're, they're literally typing it in on their browser. They're remembering the link. It says, oh, it's go to this link. And then they're going to Google and they're typing it into their browser. I don't know what's going on with my analytics here. Yeah, uh, here we go. So, but if you look, I'll show you. So this is when we stopped doing like as many shorts and posting them on all our platforms. And then the traffic went down and now it's kind of going up a little bit because we're doing them again. But the big thing is the mo majority of our traffic is direct visits. And then the second is email. But a lot of the emails are from people going directly typing in the link, entering their email, and then they get an email and they go back to the landing page. But again, remember, until you get the direct visits up, the email does not matter because you're going to have zero and zero and you have to have the direct visits first before you can get the email. Um, so anyways, uh, let's open it up. Well, Anders, do you have any other questions? Um, yeah, but you know, it's cool. I think, uh, I think you've covered a lot. Um, well, go ahead. What is it? So well, at some point I'm going to like work on like building up my back end. And I, I really thought we only needed one domain, but obviously that's not the case. Well, um, however, could, in future, I'm sorry, go on. You could get by with one domain. Like if you just wanted to promote one product, you'd be fine. I mean, you could promote just AI, like our, our, our bootcamp and you'd still, it's kind of hard anyways. Like I honestly probably shouldn't promote as many products because it's a little ADD and I think it lowers our sales when we do that, but it's more like me trying to figure out what's going to sell. So yeah. can you change, um, the, uh, location of where the domain directs people in future? Can you change? Yes, that's the cool thing. And, and that's part of the reason, the other reason I forgot to tell you why redirect domains are really good and why they're cool is because if you get a bunch of traffic to a link and you're like, oh, I don't like this offer, or I don't want to sell this anymore, or I want to change it, you can just put a new link there and you can say, this is the new best AI course, or this is the new <laughs> best AI product, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, cool, thanks. No worries. <laughs> Um, can I buy the domain you just bought from you? I mean, you can, I don't even, it, it, transferring domains is kind of annoying. I, honestly, there's probably, instead of using the, you could say, you know, best, or like, I would just, I wouldn't worry about it. It's, that domain is not very good anyway. It's like four words. Um, anybody want to jump in here? Who's, who's ready to rock and roll with some of this content? Anybody like how many people want to start taking action? Cause I know we have a few people. We have like three people that said that they started doing this. I want to see more people doing this because I also want to make sure that we can help you. Like if you start doing it, I can give you feedback and, and it helps the group too. It helps us figure out what works. Um, one of the other things that we might start doing as well, I, I don't know what happened with the marketplace, Ryan, but I want to start opening up coaching calls again. Cause I know like some people want more one-on-one -on -one help. If, if that's helpful to you, we might do that again. Um, just join, need to watch the replays, figuring out what I need actually need to do. How much access and control are you getting to virtual assistant? Uh, that's a good question. How much ac access and control are we giving to virtual assistants, Ryan? Uh, it's a tiered access. So um, we have um, one VA that we highly trust has been around for a long yes. time who has access to a lot of things. And then other VAs have access to what they need. But one tip I can give you is um, give them only what they need. Let me see how to say this. Give them what they need, but don't necessarily directly give it to them. So if you're sharing passwords, share you can share a password. If you share a password and they have it, then if you no longer work with them or whatever, then you have to change the password. If you share access via something like LastPass, LastPass will not display the password to them, but it will let them log in. So then they have access, but at the end of the day, if you want to work with somebody else, you just remove their access and away they go. Same thing happens with accounts. So like if you have YouTube, don't give them the password to your YouTube. You can make them like a YouTube manager and then you can always just kick them out and you retain access to the primary YouTube. So that's how, that's how we do it. Hmm. 
Um, Scott. Oh, got a. You're muted, Scott. Sorry. Hear me now? Yes, sir. All right. Quick question. Uh, regards to, I, th I think it's my, you might have answered it already. Uh, loading up your your links and then just just to like have them go directly to your affiliate links, and then you want to go back and and change that to go into your you know system IO um, funnel. Basically, can that be done? Like, uh, yes. To get started, you're, you're putting in your. Link? To get started, you're putting in your yes, uh, yes. Your so you're links. so Scott, you're saying um, to take the redirect domain, start just sending traffic directly to the landing page, and then later you can send them to your opt-in page. Correct. That's what I was asking. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's again, that's the cool thing about the redirect links is that okay. at any time. So that's can... basically just done through the the redirect links. Yeah. So remember how we were just in there and it said forwarding. Yep. Yep. So at any time you could change that. You could literally change that link to Google.com, right? Okay. And so gotcha. that's what I would recommend is like, you know, start out just sending people to the landing page. Gotcha. And then as you start to get, I mean, if you want to go full crazy and just like start getting email, set up your system, do all the automation, you can do that, but it's really not necessary. Like when yeah, you have such low volume. Yeah. That's what I'm seeing. Yeah. 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 I've been holding off thinking I need to get that ready, but I don't, I just need to get it warmed up. And no. Warm. And that's the biggest mistake too. Like I have this yeah. guy that I'm working with. And, uh, well, not working with, but he's a friend of mine and he refuses to do videos. And I'm like, dude, you just have to start. And like, yeah. he's like, I don't have the domain. And I'm like, you don't need the domains. Gotcha. You don't yeah. have anybody. Like you're in the middle of the desert with a coffee shop and nobody's <laughs> there. And you're trying to like make the best Frappuccino and it's right. like, nobody, nobody's around to, to taste it. Trying to know? be Starbucks in the desert. <laughs> yeah, yeah so trying I'm to, just, yeah. Can I just jump in just very quickly? Yes, sir. Because um, I can see people are scratching their head with, with um, redirects, and I totally understand that if you physically haven't done it yourself, you'll still scratch your head. Think of a redirect this way. Your telephone number that stays with you for the last 20 or so years, mobile number, that's always consistent, but you always change your, your telephone. Your phone changes, but the number's always consistent. So you're always in a position to change the phone, but the number is still consistent. Does that now make sense? Sure, yeah. Does that make sense, yeah? Because we've all had mobile phones for the last five years and it's always consistent, but we're changing our, our mobiles. So hopefully that'll make sense now. Yeah, that makes sense. I was just, through the whole time, I didn't realize that it could be that easy just through the, the uh, redirect. And mm -hmm. that makes a lot of sense now. So yeah, cool, mm -hmm. thanks. Um, okay. So it's 1115. Now, normally we do the giveaways, um, because we are trying to do more of like the one-on-one -on -one stuff. I think what we'll do is we'll give away, I'll give away like 30 minutes of my time. And then I'm sure we can have Ryan give away 30 minutes of his time, just like a one-on-one -on -one call. Um, I don't really know how to pull, like, I don't think we have everybody in the, the wheel of fortune or whatever it is. Um, well, I guess we can just announce it on the group or whatever. Um, but if you guys want to personally like book time with us, uh, I'm going to put my schedule in there and then we'll have Ryan in there. If you guys want to do like one-on-one -on -one stuff, we're happy to walk you through like on zoom, the setup, walk you through any questions. If you want more time with us, um, if that's helpful for you. And, uh, I think that's it for today. We're going to see you on Thursday. Um, does anybody have anything else that they want to talk about before we head out? Oh, also, it would be really helpful if you if um if you made a post in the Facebook group. So if you just said, "Hey, I I, I like the session today. You know, I learned this. I'm I'm getting started. I'm taking action. Um, I use it for the emails for us, for our swipe files, for our, for our own emails. If you could just write something cool, like nice, in the group, it helps us just get more people um in the group. Thanks, Million, for your honesty. Thanks, Rainer. Um, okay, all right. Sounds like we're all good. We will see you on Thursday and thanks for being here and we'll uh, see you next time. See you guys.